Hey everyone, this is Fred from 4x4 Shop. Today I want to show you our Tesla screen that we're going to install in a Ford Mustang 2017 that it already came with backup camera. And it comes with a small screen, no navigation. So we're going to change it to our uh, Tesla screen with Apple CarPlay Android Auto. So that's how the screen look, looks like with the related harnesses and the CAN bus. So you can see that uh, basically it retains the push button start and it comes with the silver panel uh, for the functions that already uh, the vehicle comes with it. So it will be changed to 10.25 inch Android screen Tesla. We start installation shortly. Hello, this is 4x4 Shop with a 2016 to 2019 Ford Mustang basic infotainment system radio removal. Now this is the basic system here. There is another version which comes with the full touch screen and digitizer. So this unit here, if you have this, this is what our system is compatible to. So this is the dash trim here. Now, this is a disassemble video where we're going over the steps to show you all the procedures you need to do to install our new system. All the panels have been pre-removed, so we can just get through a video quickly to show you exactly what you need to do. There's only two tools you need to remove this system, which is a panel popper tool and an eight millimeter with the extension on it to get into some of the gaps for the dash. First thing we'd like to start off is the air conditioning vent trim panel. You will come to the passenger side and you will pry off the first panel and then you will pry off the side panel there. Then you will slowly work your way with the pry tool starting from the top to bottom. When you get around to the passenger driver's side, you need to pry off the bottom trim here. That trim will be able to be hung freely so you don't need to remove it or plug it out. Then you will start and work your way. Be careful with the actual panel's material because some of them are carbon fiber and you need to just be careful with the removal. So you apply your panel popping tool insert and you will pry it out. Now if you take a look at it, there's absolutely no screws here but it is strong very tight clips all the way from the top to bottom of the actual trim panel once you take this off you can put it in the back then you're going to pry off the side panels here take note that you're going to remove the first two seven millimeter screws so seven millimeter is the only screw size in here now you will go to the passenger side. And then you will do the same thing. We already moved this panel here. There is two seven millimeter screws again that you will need to remove from the panel here. And these panels here are just connected by clips with one magnet that actually attaches to the body frame. So just be careful. It's very simple to remove and come off. Now you will come to the actual center console where you will pry up the top two trims here because they sit above this panel here. So we like to pry them up so we can fully remove the whole panel. Then once you do that, you come to the back and you pry up from the inside, pry up the actual panel. Also at the front here, once you remove this, you will pry up this panel here again. Now take up the plastic, you'll notice two screws for seven millimeter screws that you will need to remove. Once you remove that, just pull it out and put it to the side. Then you take up your trim, you're able to firmly pull out the dash panel. 
and then you can put it to the side. There is one clip here. We remove this because this is the key sense. So in the process of actually testing the system, we wanna have this panel outside of the car so we can easily work on it. And the key sense sits right here at the top with two screw holes holding it into place. So just like that, and then you will just put the two screw holes back and then plug back the key sense. Without this, your vehicle will not start because this is actually the key sense module for your vehicle, it's the antenna. So if you do not have this plugged in, either on the console or separated to this plug here, the vehicle will not start. So make sure when you're done the installation that you plug this back in because it is crucial for your vehicle's functionality to actually receive the signal to the key. Once you pry that off, you will come to the bottom of the trim here, pull that off. You will have another two seven millimeter screws. At the top of the dash, you will have an additional two seven millimeter screws. Then you can just gradually work your way around the edges with the pry tool, pulling backwards towards the system. Now, like I said, we've already pre-assembled this, disassembled it so we can explain these are your first two wires that are of great importance. We will get into the instructions of these on the installation video. Now, it's just two clips here. You just need to depress the tabs and then the clips will slide out. So just depress the tabs down and the clips will slide out of the radio. Then you remove four additional seven millimeter screws on the screen and four additional seven millimeter screws on the radio. Once you do that, you can then proceed to slide out the radio. We've already plugged it out. So at the back of the radio, you have two main power harnesses. You can't get them mixed up, so you don't have to worry. Then you have one antenna plug, which you will we will be explaining in the process of our system. Now also, this USB adapter just has two tabs. It is simply removed from the original housing here. Just plugs right out, pull one tab up slightly to release it, then pull the other one down slightly to release it, and then just pull it out and it will come right out of the system. That USB will no longer be used because this is for your factory radio, but we will cover our USB that will be replaced in that original OEM position. Last is the screen. You have the four millimeter screws that you've already pulled out, the seven millimeters. Pull the screen forward. You have one wire here, which we will also explain on the installation. This is your backup camera wire for the new system. So this plug also is very important. So we will explain that on the installation video. Thank you. This is 4x4 shop with the 2016 to 2019 Mustang dash panel removal video. Hi, this is 4x4 shop with the 2016 to 2019 Mustang infotainment system install. In this video, we're gonna go over all your connections and all your vehicle adapter inputs. First thing you'll notice that when you do have the package, that there is two plugs for the actual backup camera. Now, it depends on what configuration your vehicle comes with, but either one of these plugs may fit, but you will assess it. So this is the configuration for this car. It's very simple. You slide the plug down to the release position, slide it up, it will lock in. Then on our main T harness, it's going to say camera. There is another plug that says camera in. The plug you are looking for is the plug that says camera only. Disregard the other camera in plug. That's for an additional camera. You can decide if you would like to install that. But for the original OEM camera, this is the input here from your factory plug into our T harness that will plug into the back of the screen, which we will cover later. Now, these two are your air conditioning control plugs. These two plugs will directly plug into our system's 
command unit. So there is no harnesses for these. But for the OEM radio harness, this is your CAN box, which gives you all your communication signals to retain your steering wheel control and all those additional features. You will plug it into the OEM factory plug, just like this. Then you will plug the other T harness, which is your speaker and actual power output. So if you're due testing, this is the wire here that will have the main components in it. So again, these are your three major harnesses here. Now this is our supplied radio antenna wire. This is the OEM radio antenna. Now this wire, you do have to apply a little bit of force because these connections are very tight. So when you are trying to remove the connection, do not pull from the cable, but directly pull from the actual plug insert. All you need to do is line up the tip with the antenna, and then you will install it. And like I said, make sure it's not seated in the halfway position. You have to apply some pressure, and you will notice that it locks into place and that the two seams should be seamless. You shouldn't be able to really put anything in between the gap there. That's how you make a secure signal to make sure that your radio functions at its most optimal condition. Mm -hmm. Yes. Also, be careful of the can plugs. Now, they are different in orientation and size, so you, if they are disconnected, you cannot plug them in wrong by mistake because they're not the same plug but just be careful with this to make sure you actually insert it into the back of the dash at a reasonable level and that you're not pinching any wires when you're trying to reinstall the frame secondly this is your actual external microphone plug so this is your external microphone the unit does come with a built-in microphone but for better noise cancellation we recommend using the external microphone that plugs right in here on the beige harness that will plug in the back of the radio now these other additional wires are for you know aftermarket audio system output so if you're adding an amplifier these are the additional wires here that will be used for that type of install this is our supplied gps antenna which screws into the back of the system normally we put the gps antenna on the passenger side top dash panel and then we run it along the seam trims here behind the housings into the opening here for the radio the reason we do that is because you get optimal signal if this antenna is not hidden behind actual dash plastics so the best place for it that we put it is right there it's pretty much out of sight for this vehicle because the dash is somewhat high so it's not something you or your passengers will overly notice secondly we have our usb adapters here now this is the plug that will go into our new trim at the back here it will plug into that trim to give you the factory oem look now this plug does support video and usb and if ever needed any other installation of applications now again here is the main air conditioning plugs you have to make sure that these plugs are inserted firmly and locked into place side note when you are doing the installation before you remove your factory system make sure that your original oem air conditioning is turned to the off position before you install our system so please on a side note make sure your oem air conditioning is turned off before you remove all the dash panels on the system now here are the plugs that you will be plugging in to our radio. This is the main plug here for the power. This is a plug for your auxiliary. Note, not all vehicles come with the auxiliary input in. So this is the plug for here. When inserting our plugs, please take note in the side pin positions and the side slider positions that they actually line up correctly because we have some customers who will try to force them. So this is a six pin pin and it looks like it can go into this slot here, but that is not the correct slot for it. So you have to pay attention to where you're actually sliding the pins in. There is grooves in the actual radio for where those pins slide into those actual positions. And also another side note here, this is your OEM cigarette lighter adapter 
it has to be removed from your original radio. So if you see our slot and it's empty, you just have to remove it from the original radio. Now there's little tabs here at the back that you push in with either your fingernail or a small little screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver and they will just pop out and you'll be able to slide this right of the housing. Do not put too much pressure on this because you do not want to damage your connection. The two top here are your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antennas. If they are not pre-assembled, please just attach them. Now, it doesn't make any difference to which side you put the antennas on. Just put them on and make sure they're both attached, okay? So again, your main power plug. Now you will hear a click when it locks into place. And your antenna, this is just basic so you understand where the connections go, your antenna. And again, at the bottom, the cable is not long enough to be inserted, but your last two cables will plug in to these two plugs. They are different size. You cannot make a mistake to plug them in the wrong position because they will not fit. So once you take a look at them and assess it for a minute, you will see which plug goes into the right section. But again, please make sure these plugs are firmly locked into place because there are possibilities if you don't put them in properly, they will slide out and then your air conditioning may not be functioning to your ideal requirements. and your black plug there. These are the only two additional plugs that you have to worry about as long as if you're not using the actual microphone. So if you're using the microphone, those are all their pin positions there for your connections. There's no additional plugs that go into any of those slots and that completes the installation of the unit. So the unit is installed the installation is uh, done. You can see how the screen look like. You can see the bracket, how flush is it. And it retains all the factory buttons plus the push start. You can turn on the AC or shut it off. And the screen is fully touched. You can do Apple CarPlay Android Auto. That's the Apple CarPlay. And also you can do Android Auto. And you can play movies you can use the steering wheel controls like it or not you and your friends are a part of it now I don't have friends I got you can install apps You can install any apps that you like from Google Store and you can use it on our screen. The hazard light is here. That's a traction control on and off is there. So all the functions from before they work uh, as they were. And this one is to ch change the mode on the screen it does change uh, to different modes. You can just navigate through the screen. Plus you can use the touch screen for uh, AC panel and it's fully touch. Plus it retains the factory backup camera. So by going to reverse, you still can see the unit shifts to backup camera so everything is plug and play uh, no modification is required it's simple to install uh, you can do it by yourself as we show it uh, before uh, this part of the video so you can follow those steps and install the unit for yourself and this is one of our best units that we have we used to have uh, different units but uh, we were waiting for the best unit launch and this is one of the best units launched and it, this is basically same uh, hardware that we are using for our Maserati units too. 
if you're interested to get these type of units you can buy them online from 4x4shop.ca or you can give us a call at 905-604-4294 and one of our technicians will be more than happy to assist you thank you and have a great day